In this video, I will outline the Boost recommendation feature, which is designed to enhance the online shopping experience for your shoppers and to drive more sales. With the Boost recommendation, you can seamlessly integrate personalized product suggestions across your website, from the homepage to the cart page, whether that's showcasing bestsellers, highlighting new arrived items, or suggesting products that were frequently bought together. The Boost recommendation feature offers a versatile range of options to enhance your customer's shopping experience. Through advanced AI algorithms, Boost's recommendations ensures that your recommendations are dynamically generated based on real-time data, providing your customers with relevant suggestions at every customer touchpoint. Plus, with manual creation available, you can fine-tune your recommendations to match your brand's unique identity and vision. Let's explore how you can effortlessly display AI-based, statistic-based, and manual recommendations to elevate your customer's shopping experience and to drive conversions. If you navigate from the Boost's homepage on the top navigation bar, head to the recommendations tab. And here is all of the setup for the recommendations widget, as well as the general settings. And we've got the insights and analytics of the recommendations feature, which is covered in a separate walkthrough video. But I will briefly show you at the end of this video. So if we head to the recommendations widget, this is the setup. So to get started, we have the about this feature section, which just kind of tells you a quick overview of the feature, allowing you to display various types of AI-based, statistic-based and manual recommendations um, for your store. We've got the video tutorials, the user guides, best practices, and how to add the widget theme here as well, if you are struggling, but this video should help solve that. So in this little um, table, you can see the live widgets, the drafted widgets, and the archived widgets. You can also search by widget name or widget ID. We've got the filter as well, which you can filter by theme or recommendation type. And you can also refresh here to kind of see your widget a little bit quicker. So in the draft as well, just to show you, you can separate these by the placement type. So we've got the home page, the product page, the collection page, and the cart page. So let's show you how to create a recommendation widget. Click on the add new widget section, and this will take you to step one out of three steps, okay? So this is to select a page where you want the setup widget to be viewable. So we've got the home page. Depending on the page type as well will depend on the type of um, recommendation type that you can set up. So as you can see, the home page has slightly less options than the product page and the collection page versus the cart page as well. So let's take a look at the product page first so that you can see all of the different recommendation types for this widget. So we've got the AI powered tools, which are the frequently bought together ones and the related items. So these recommend products that are bought together based on items added to the customer's cart and recommend an alternative and complementary products that have similar features to the selected products as well. Also, we've got the recently purchased widget, the best sellers widget, the newest arrivals, trending products, hand-picked products, recently viewed and most viewed. So you can add all of these recommendations on the products page, depending on what type of recommendation widget you'd like. For this example, we'll use the best seller. Also, it is important to note that depending on the recommendation type will depend on the simplicity of setting this up. So for some type like the best sellers, the new arrivals, the setup is super quick and straightforward, but for more specialized items like the frequently brought together, you um, can choose between the AI-based or rule recommendations. However, if you prefer a more hands-on approach, you can manually select recommended products using our manual settings feature. So as well, just to mention, if you do choose an AI-based method, the next step is to define second recommendation algorithm for the widget. And this is in the case that there's insufficient data for the primary algorithm. And you can see alternatives in the drop-down menu too. If you do choose a rule-based recommendation as well, you will need to define the rule to recommend products based on their attributes. And the more attributes a recommended product matches to the main product, the higher the ranking is. So let's show you a simple overview first, which is of the best sellers. So once you've chosen the recommendation page type and the recommendation type for this widget, you want to click next here, and this will take you to step two. 
So step two is essentially the widget design and the widget layout. We've got the tags here to showcase what you have just selected in the previous step. So we can see that this will view on the product page and it is to showcase the best sellers. You can change the widget layout. So we've got it in a carousel format and you can choose the maximum number of recommendations and the number of, number of products per row. So if you wanted to change this to six, for example, you can scroll and navigate through the best sellers for the products here. Also, we've got more customization in the widget title. So you can change the name and style. You can center the alignment if you like, change the text color just to make this super on brand as well. Same with the font. So you can change this again to completely customize this to your branding. And then if you want to, if you have completely customized this, you can save the widget title settings as default. Whenever you create a new recommendation widget, it will use your default settings for the title. So you don't have to customize these each and every time. Moving on to the final step, which is step three. This is going to be one of the most important parts as this is gonna make sure that the widgets are visible on your store. So now that we're in step three, this is where you will add the widget to your live theme. And it is crucial that you have both of these steps completed to ensure that your recommendation widget is visible. And the first one is to enable the app embed boost core on your Shopify store. So click the enable boost core. This will take you to your Shopify store and to ensure that this theme is added. So as you can see here, you just toggle on the boost core feature and head and make sure you click save at the top right in your Shopify. Once these changes are saved, you can head back to the boost dashboard. And then the step two is to add the app block boost recommendations to the page. So this is the product page that we have just customized and set up. You have to copy this ID and paste the widget ID into the app block section in Shopify. So click through to that link once you've copied the ID. And here is where you can add this section. As you can see, we've got the boost recommendation widget here, but it is empty and you must insert the widget ID to pop Play this block. So in this right hand corner here, I'm going to click paste, which is product IGD that we have just created. And now you can see it has loaded the best sellers product page that we uh, just walked through earlier. Again, click save to ensure that this is complete. Head back to the boost dashboard again, click I'm all done. And there you have it. You have created your first widget for your recommendation widget and you will be able to see it in the product page section of drafts because it won't automatically set it live it will be ready to go so when you are ready to set this live simply click launch also it's important to recommend that it will tell you kind of the status the widget id so we can confirm the settings but based on the widget id we just created what it is created for, so we created it for best sellers, and here is where you can launch it. Also, if you click on these ellipses, you can edit this uh, recommendation widget at any time. You can duplicate it, archive it, delete, and also here you can easily see the analytics of this specific widget. So if I click through to that, it will take me through to the widget performance here, and you can have a look of the widget ID and the product page recommendations here as well. The analytics of each feature is also outlined in a separate walkthrough video. So if you want more detail on the analytics and what these mean, please head to that walkthrough video. But that in a quick overview is the recommendations widgets. I will quickly outline the general settings before we finish. And this is the settings for recommendation where you can establish recommendation rules that will apply to each and every recommendation widget across your website. So you can exclude currently viewed products as well so they don't appear in the recommendations on the same page, which we really recommend because why would you recommend a product that the customer is already viewing? Also, we've got the option to exclude out of stock items as well. And if there's specific products that you want to exclude in search, for example, products with poor reviews or low conversion rates, you might want to add them to the exclusions here. And you can include products with high conversion rates or good reviews as well by customizing them here. So that in a nutshell is the recommendations feature, how you can set it up, the general settings for each and every recommendation you create, 
and the analytics of this briefly. If you have any questions regarding this feature or how to set it up, please don't hesitate to contact our customer support team as they would be more than happy to help. Thank you.